Hi there, so glad you've joined us for another informative edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. Coming up, we celebrate Parent Month with some useful tips. Stay with us as we share more insights on personal development through these and other interesting features. An important message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. What to do if you think you have been exposed or are experiencing signs and symptoms of COVID-19? Immediately call 888-1LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. In addition, you should stay at home. Don't go to work, school, or any public place. Do not use public transport. And avoid visitors to your home. You may need to do this for up to 14 days to reduce the spread of the infection. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The people who work in the public service often go above and beyond to deliver quality service and help to enhance the lives of others. Such good work is promoted and celebrated through the annual Civil Servants of the Year Awards. Take a look. Every year, hardworking, dedicated public servants are celebrated for excellence in the execution of their duties. These Civil Servants of the Year are nominated by their peers and selected by the Civil Service Week Steering Committee in the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. The request for nominations is usually sent out in September, with the selection and announcement made in late October. The prestigious awards ceremony is then held during Civil Service Week in November. The event has had its profile elevated with not just one, but three categories awarded since First Heritage Cooperative Credit Union Limited FHC took over the role of main sponsor and organizer in 2019. Different categories would bring different strengths. So we opened it up and we decided that um, to increase the participation, to get more persons being nominated, etc., we would open it up and award three different categories. Acting Director of the Jamaica Information Services Research, Print and Production Division, Celia Lindsay, is one of three persons selected as the 2019 Civil Servant of the Year. She was awarded for the category of Management. Customer Service Manager at the Administrator General's Department, Sophia Levy, one in the middle management category, while administrative assistant with the Jamaica Defence Force Coast Guard, Candice Henry, topped the technical support category. I feel good to know that I'm appreciated and that the Civil Servant Steering Committee could have chosen me to represent for the technical support category. I'm so really and truly to be chosen as the Civil Servant of the Year for 2019 is indeed a great honour. Each awardee received a plaque, citation, and $200,000 cash prize. In addition, they were allocated $150,000 for a joint community project. As part of their reign, the 2019 Civil Servants of the Year upped the ante and executed two community charity projects instead of the usual one. The trio spearheaded the retrofitting of the Homestead Place of Safety for Girls dining area with tables and chairs in July. It made the Stony Hill facility a little more homely for the 40-plus girls living there. The ladies are excited. They're really excited. They have owned this room. They have identified this space and have identified their own corners and have already said how they're going to be treated eating and taking care of it and we really look forward to them preserving and taking care of the furniture that has been provided. The Civil Servants of the Year raised $96,574 in cash and kind to add to the $150,000 received from First Heritage for the project. The donations came in the form of extra chairs from Carlisa Limited, tablecloth, window volances and painting courtesy of the Kingston Seventh-day Baptist Church and tokens for the girls from the Administrator General's Department, Ministry of National Security, Jamaica Information Service and Jamaica Defense Force. We're tremendously excited because uh, this is a project that was earmarked, something that we've been working on and uh, for the team of ladies and First Heritage to come on board to collaborate with our agency to provide this for us, we're tremendously grateful. And we are very satisfied with the project that they have selected and we are very happy that they have chosen the Homestead Place of Safety and we encourage them to continue the relationship that they have with this institution. 
National Baptist Basic School on Greenwich Street in Kingston also felt the wave of love and caring gesture of the 2019 First Heritage Cooperative Credit Union Civil Servant of the Year awardees. Well-needed supplies were donated to the institution, including a printer gifted by a generous citizen and $50,000 from Sagicor to purchase school desks and chairs. We decided on this project, um, wanted to give back to the children. Um, we believe in molding the minds, helping to mold the minds of young people. And so when we heard of the school in need, we jumped on the assistance. Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances Limited also partnered with the outstanding civil servants to gift the school with $200,000 worth of sanitizers and a desktop computer. We are very involved in education at all levels. So uh, over the last six years, we have been sponsoring various schools. We decided to partner on this uh, project because we are very, very um, concerned and about, you know, the, the fact of um, what's happening now and we want to, to be a part of the solution. Items from the Administrator General's Department were also donated while the JIS provided Jamaican Heritage Charge and booklets for the students. I must observe everybody who took time out, especially in this time of a pandemic, to really think about us. I think in this time now, persons need to rally around each other, and the fact that we can go out and to contribute to a school that is in need um, at this time, I think will greatly impact the children and the administrators there. Really and truly it was quite satisfying to be able to serve our nation and our nation's children in this manner. It has been a wonderful experience to interact with persons who I didn't know before and we've been able to come together through this award to do something and, and what is really very special is that we're also, as we contribute to the nation through our desks um, at the various entities, we are also now giving back to entities that are also supported by the government of Jamaica um, to, in, to improve on the quality of care. The two projects at Homestead Place of Safety for Girls and the National Baptist Basic School set a model of philanthropy for future awardees to emulate. Each person must intentionally navigate to a range of choices daily in order to make a difference and to expand the field of opportunities for themselves and others. As we purposefully engage in activities, we form lasting linkages. And over time, we expand our spheres of influence and build bridges that bring us closer and allow us to influence and transform the lives of people everywhere. To you, our kind-hearted sponsors, our colleagues, our family, our friends, who've extended the reach of your arms to the recipients of the Civil Servant, 2019 Civil Servants of the Year, we thank you. Parenting is a wonderful experience, but it is one that can cause anxiety about how to ensure children are properly guided. As we observe November as Parent Month, here are some effective techniques for you to consider. For teenagers, it's a little harder in some ways, and in other ways it's a little easier because they do understand the difference between right and wrong. It's clearer what are some of the things that they love and you can remove those things. But one of the things that's really important with teenagers is really to take the time to make sure that they understand that their feelings and their opinions are valued. So in the moment, yes, I'm removing these things, but I'm also having a conversation with you about why you won't have access to these things for a particular period. Right? We're explaining why this thing might be dangerous to you, whether or not you agree with it. I am the parent, right? This is where I am coming from. It really requires a conversation because ultimately what you want to teach them to do you know, is to reason and to think, right? You don't want to just be disciplining and you're not helping them to think through it and to use proper judgment and reasoning skills. And so those are some of the things that you can try. If the child becomes 
stubborn the child is more obstinate and the child has a fixed mindset if you will that this is what he or she is going to continue to do then you might need professional help you might need to call the commission or you might need to call a social worker or a guidance counselor to help for you because sometimes parents don't have the language either to even explain why this behavior is wrong and that causes friction once the friction starts then we recommend that you get a third party involved because it could become worse. people don't feel like they really have an answer to everything and the truth is that that is the reality but there are different things that people can try um, we're not saying that any one thing works for everybody or that you will even get the outcome that you want immediately especially when you're dealing with young children you might have to try something several times before you see a particular result so for example if it is that you want a child to learn the difference between right, right and wrong a lot of times in the past we use pain to teach that this is wrong right um, but we find that ultimately when you hit a child what you're teaching them to do is when I don't like something I should hit and I should lash out what you want to try in a situation like that you can try removing privileges if there are things that the child might love to do or even the age-old timeout um, you know where you say listen for this period you have to sit by yourself there's no communication there's no talking sit down and be still Sometimes you have to physically just hold your child and help them to breathe through it because you have some children where they have so much emotion and so much anger and they want to get it out that it's really difficult for them to regulate it at such a young age. And so you have to physically hold them, put your hand on them, help them to breathe through it until they're calm. And with children, even if they don't understand necessarily um, the big concept of right and wrong, they can sometimes understand tone. Right? And tone is not the same thing as lashing out and using um, certain words and calling them different names. Tone is being firm and saying, I do not want you on this. So for example, if a child keeps going off on something, you might have to take them off it 10 times, right? And continue to reinforce with the same tone and consistency that you do not want them on this. And also for younger children, sometimes you have to be the one to remove whatever it is that you don't want them to interact with from the environment right because they're so young and so impulsive you can't necessarily leave it to them to understand i shouldn't touch this thing right so that's how we deal with the younger children The future belongs to our youth, and an important consideration they all have is knowing the opportunities that will be there for them to grasp, particularly as it relates to work. It's Youth Month, and we are looking at the future of work. This very topic was discussed at a workshop held with young people before the COVID pandemic, but it is still relevant. Good to be here today to welcome and to join with the youth, all of you, everyone here today at this Youth and National Forum to discuss and share ideas under the theme Future of Work, Realizing Productivity Growth. Today's forum is very timely as many of our youths are making preparation to transition into the changing world of work. I believe that a forum like this affords us the opportunity of identifying the challenges that are expected to arise 
from this new wave of technological advancement known as the fourth industrial revolution. But there are also opportunities as well. I wish to implore on you as youths that you have a significant role to play in our drive to enhance productivity. We appreciate that the talent of the future lies in you. As a government, it is our responsibility to lay the foundation which will enable you not only to achieve your goals, but also to prepare you in, take, in taking your rightful place within society. Our young people remain on the cutting edge of technology, and it is prime time to maximize and monetize these opportunities. Welcome to the fourth industrial revolution. Right now, if you go into courts, you can buy a smart fridge. Why do you need to connect your fridge to your mobile device? What is it that you need to tell your fridge to do? Um, lower the temperature, thaw your chicken. There are so many things that are, that, that are awaiting us in this fourth industrial revolution. When you think about 3D printing, right now sneakers are being printed, mass production, because nobody needs to, needs to assemble the, these, these materials. Click of a button, it's done. When you think about big data analytics, we're all connected. Right now, there are, there are companies here in Jamaica that, knew, that knows exactly where we are, what we're doing, and what our demographic is. I kid you not, I work with them. A lot of the times, we're on, we are connected online, but we're just consuming. The only way to earn is to create. What will you learn to create? You can do work for individuals in Europe, in America, just by sitting at home around your computer, use, utilizing your skill set. With that, I'll just leave you with a few pointers. Right now, it's less brown, it's more braids. Always observe the patterns. That's how you'll be able to position yourself at the forefront of the industry. The industry, we're still in the early stages. It's going to get a lot more aggressive because remember the pattern, 100 years and changes constant. It's very important that when we're thinking about how we position ourselves in this new world that we're helping to solve industrial problems, that we're not necessarily just going with the trends, but we're also helping to solve real problems that people are having underground. In Jamaica, we notice that artificial intelligence it's in existence, it's taking over, it's, it's in the banking system, manufacturing, tourism and so forth, right? We notice that there's, through the increased use of technology, it is creating a number of job opportunities in a number of sectors, namely BPO sector, animation and cyber security system. Some of the occupations that are, that, 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 that are in demand are coming on stream, data scientists, automobile engineers, project officers, robotics automation developers and to the right you have some of the some of the skills that are needed robot programming factory automation electronics graphic designing in terms of animation jamaica is gaining a lot of traction within the animation industry because of our increased use of technology because of the creative skills that exist here in jamaica right so what is happening is that a lot of films are being sent to Jamaica to be further developed and sent back to the US. And as a result, it is creating a number of job opportunities in several areas. For example, animators, graphic and web designers. So these are good areas for persons to get into. 85% of the jobs that will exist in 2030 don't exist as yet. AI is what is changing this workforce. AI is many things. AI, even robotics falls under AI. There is some, you know, a word like machine learning that you may have learned about. There is problem solving, which AI focuses on. Like if you are trying to go from here to Hong Kong, do you, you want a route? Do you want the cheapest route in terms of dollar? Do you want a route, airline, you know, route in terms of minimum number of stops? Or do you want a route which takes you in the shortest amount of time? So which one do you want? And you know, how, how does it find you the best solution? All these are some of you know, typical AI problems until it has been consumed by the world of data. 
and with this data what has happened is that we now have machine learning coming into play even machine learning has existed in computer science for a long time but what has happened is and the tech companies are also at fault they tend to use ai and machine learning interchangeably so what is ai ai is a program that can sense reason act and adapt so it is doing what you know showing some kind of intelligence by acting and adapting in the environment that it exists then we have machine learning which is doing similar things but when it's you know making actions and when it's doing some kind of uh, behavior it is based on data we have all this data without analytics this big data that we are looking at is just nothing but a heap of garbage we need to really make sense of that data how do we make sense of that data we make sense of that data with the machine learning algorithms and many people call it analytics um, you know you're doing something with the data so we have to be mindful as the data is increasing the information can decrease if we don't some do something with this data Economic Development Initiative is helping farmers and community tourism enterprises become more organized, profitable, and sustainable. Come with us now to some of the communities benefiting. The National Development Plan Vision 2030 Jamaica outlines several goals to empower all Jamaicans to reach their fullest potential. A key step in achieving this target is creating equal opportunities to make a living from our abundant resources. The Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, through the Rural Economic Development Initiative Ready is doing just that by improving the earning potential of persons in rural areas operating in the agriculture and tourism sectors. The first phase of the program, which ended in 2017 after a seven-year run, provided benefits to over 19,000 micro and small-scale rural agricultural producers, as well as tourism product and service providers. Now, READY is set for its second phase. We want to improve the linkages of agriculture to tourism. We want to improve the ability of farmers to have climate resilient methodologies, that's drip irrigation for example, protected agriculture. We want to improve the ability of community tourism enterprises to develop and become licensed to provide your services to our international guests. With the support of a 40 million US dollar loan from the World Bank, Ready2 starts in 2020. We want to enhance the competitiveness of both sectors, so we want to link our producers into strategic uh, value chains, um, taking it from the pro primary production stage up through to the market, linking them not just to domestic markets but also to exports, as well as to build out more agritourism type ventures. Ready2 will continue to build on partnerships with key government ministries, agencies and departments. These entities will receive technical assistance to improve their capacity to serve project beneficiaries. Across the island, especially in rural areas, cultivators depend on earning potential from farming to sustain themselves and their families. Lack of access to markets, climate change and unsustainable farming practices, however, continually threaten their livelihoods. Ready2 will seek to address those issues. As it relates to climate resilient approaches, it involves um, looking at the farming practices, in integrating more environmentally sound or green technologies in production as well as in, in terms of alternative um, power or energy sources. Registered farmers who are members of a cooperative or benevolent society are encouraged to apply for support to establish greenhouses, drip irrigation, water harvesting and storage systems, as well as other climate smart land and soil conservation measures. We also have a training component to ensure that the beneficiary group is uh, 
prepared for business because this is what Ready2 is all about, is to develop businesses among rural communities. Oh, these groups have to be legally registered, uh, either as a cooperative, a benevolent society, or a special authorized society, but they have to be legally registered. The project will target vulnerable groups such as women, youth, and persons with disabilities. Groups are encouraged to incorporate these individuals in their associations for inclusiveness. Everything that you see on the farm right now is from ready. The plastic, the mesh, the irrigation system, the drums, everything. And we even receive training through them, all the necessary trainings that you would need um, to operate a greenhouse and to supply um, the wider market. The project helped us in finding market. We got the market through RADA. It has improved my life um, in the sense that I'm not financially dependent on anyone. I'm my own boss, so I choose the times I work, and it's working out quite well for me. So in case we hadn't got assistance with any market for onions, we probably would have had onions sat around and spoiled, or we might have had to give it away. However, um, we got that assistance, and it was a profit. And for those farmers who usually experience seasonal gluts, support will be given to construct more post-harvest and cold storage facilities. Welcome to Charleston Maroon Museum and Asafaya. Jamaica's culture is like no other. And there is great potential for communities with unique cultural, historical, and natural resources to share their experiences with the world and advance their neighborhoods through community tourism enterprises, CTEs. Charleston Maroon Council had received maximum aid or assistance from Ready One and is looking forward to move on to Ready Two. On the Ready One, we did a lot of infrastructure investment capacity building, training in Team Jamaica, in business, um, you know, all the foundational work that would be required. And community tourism enterprises are now really ready to go into the big leagues. CTEs will receive support in areas such as business planning, identifying target markets, product development, tour packaging, and marketing and promotion to expand their ventures. The Charles Omaroon community in itself um, has been benefiting from it. The people of the community, they are now able to come and they display their goods, such as their crops, their fruits, their different things that they have done, and uh, the, the tourists would buy what they have. The Ready2 project is poised to build and strengthen enterprises to improve Jamaica's agricultural production, as well as tourism products and services in rural areas. Get more information on the project's benefits, eligibility, and access by contacting the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. come to the end of today's edition of Jamaica Magazine, but be sure to join us again tomorrow for another show. Until then, continue to watch these and other programs by logging on to our website, jis.gov.jm, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Walk good. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.